Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Roano Zoro is on his way to become one of the greatest, if not the greatest swordsman in the world. But what makes him really unique is the fact that he carries three swords, an extremely powerful sword style that nobody else has ever thought to do or even has replicated during the time that he's been alive in One Piece. And this is a style that is capable of easily destroying strong and dangerous enemies. Throughout his journey, Zoro has upgraded his swords multiple times for even stronger swords and fortifying and dis discarding his old weapons in different ways. So in today's video, we're going to talk about all the swords that Zoro has owned during his journey as a pirate, and what the special characteristics of each sword Zoro has owned, and then go over the ones that he carries in his arsenal today. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel, or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like, and even subscribe, and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out, especially with that old YouTube algorithm, and it keeps motivating us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or another one of your favorites with a friend. Well, without further ado, let's get into the video. So, my friends, Zoro currently has three swords in his possession, the first of which is the Wado Ichimonji, which is one of the 21 great grade swords. It was forged by the legendary blacksmith of Wano, Shimotsuki Kozuburo, and given to Zoro at the age of 11 by Kuina's father, Kushiro, after his best friend Kuina had lost her life tragically at a young age. Next, we have the Sandai Kitetsu, which is just a Meito grade, or a named sword, and it's also said to be cursed, and it's going to bring great misfortune fortune to any owner. This was forged by the great blacksmith of Wano, Kazuki Sukiyaki, and given to Zoro two years ago in Logtown by the arms dealer Ippon Matsu. And finally, we have Enma, his most recent acquisition. And this is one of the 21 great grade swords. It was too forged by Shimotsuki Kozuboro and originally wielded by the legendary samurai Kazuki Odin. Originally, Odin's daughter Kazuki Hiori had inherited Enma, but gave it to Zoro on a promise that he would return Shusui to Ryuma's grave. And this has become one of Zoro's main swords. Compared to the other blades that Zoro has had throughout his journey. These three swords are the strongest that Zoro's had so far, and he's used them at various times to fight extremely powerful enemies like Kaido and even King. These swords were able to cut the skin of these two very durable pirates, which already demonstrates an incredible cutting potential that these three blades have. Now, two of Zoro's swords have very unique characteristics that make these swords incredibly powerful and even rare, and even allow Zoro to use this advantage to his own advantage in battle. First of all, Enma has the distinct trait of releasing the wielder's armament hockey, also known as Ryo in Wano. And it does it in excessive amounts and slices and cuts way more than was ever intended by the wielder. Because of Enma's unique quirk, it became an infamous sword that would be impossible to wield and master, so much so that no one other than Kazuki Odin could tame Enma. And now in the present, Zoro has become able to use this sword, although we could probably say that he still hasn't fully mastered Enma and won it over. While attempting to test the blade, Zoro ended up cutting a cliff, despite intending to just cut through a tree. And this is due to the fact that Enma started using Zoro's hockey to get stronger. And since Zoro wasn't prepared for that, the strength of his arm was totally sucked out along with his hockey, leaving it with a withered appearance. Thankfully, Zoro's mastery of arm and hockey allowed him to regain and pull his hockey back from the blade, something that even Sukiyaki praised him for, noting that normal swordsmen would have just been drained all over their hockey, leaving them like a lifeless husk. But on top of just taking the user's hockey, it also seems like Enma is capable of charging the wielder's energy or determination, as this was demonstrating during the battle on the rooftop in Onigashima. During the rooftop battle, Kaido felt a strange hockey emanating from Enma, producing a flame-like aura whenever Zoro started to release his full power while using the sword. This seemed to even worry Big Mom, who warned Kaido to dodge and had noted that it carried Odin's presence, causing him to recognize it as his former sword. And while using some powerful techniques, Enma allowed Zoro to cut Kaido while he was in his dragon form, and he was able able to also leave a permanent scar on it. This feat was quite similar to what Odin had left on Kaido using the same sword years prior. It's also worth noting that Zoro was able to defeat King using Enma. Now, it took a lot of effort when Zoro managed to finally get a hold of this sword, but through that better mastery, this is what made it possible for Zoro to have the ability to overcome that very durable and resistant Lunarian body of Kings. Moving on to our next sword, we have the Sandai Kitetsu, which is considered a cursed blade, and it would end up taking the life of any user in a completely horrible way. Now, Zoro, in fact, feels that he has been cursed, and this is what allowed him to find the sword in the first place, and also find it when he loses it on rare occasions. Zoro has commented that the sword is almost like a troubled child, that the sword apparently has a certain kind 
conscience, being a quite bloodthirsty blade, wanting Zoro to cut several enemies just to quench its will. Sensing this, Zoro began to pay a bit more attention to the Sandai Kitetsu to ensure that it acted according to Zoro's will, calming the Sandai Kitetsu's desires of the sword and at least reining it in quite a bit for Zoro to handle. Coming to our third blade, we have the Wado Ichimonji. And among the three swords that Zoro has, it is the only one that hasn't presented any different characteristics so far. However, this sword is still quite mysterious and carries with it a mysterious past and a power that hasn't been awakened yet. The Wado is among some of the most powerful swords in the world of One Piece and is second only to Enma. The Wado Ichimonji is described as a magnificent katana of the highest caliber, forged by an extremely skilled and renowned blacksmith of Wano. Since the beginning of his journey as a pirate hunter, Zoro has carried the Wado with him because it not only has a deep sentimental value, but is also his favorite sword among the many swords that he has already possessed throughout his time. This sword is extremely durable, even without the imbuement of hockey, and withstood a Yoru attack from the greatest swordsman in the world, Dracul Mihawk. And let's remember that this was pre-time skip before we even knew about hockey. So just that feat alone should demonstrate how important and powerful the Wado Ichimonji was, even at Zoro's level, which, although he was good, he was nowhere near the level of Mihawk or even the level that he currently is today. Now, it's not known for sure, but there's a good possibility that the great feature of this sword is its incredible peace resistance and its ability to withstand battle against extremely powerful enemies. We've seen multiple times where Zoro's swords were destroyed or damaged in battle, but the Wado Ichimonji has never been damaged any single time he's used it, which further supports this idea might be right, that it has some special feature to stop incoming attacks. Now, before possessing these three amazing swords, Zoro had other swords that were quite inferior to these. Now, because they didn't have a good quality or even have any possibility of getting better, they were replaced anytime Zoro could get an upgrade to strengthen himself and even to better and more durable sharp blades. To start our list, we could start with the two nameless katanas that Zoro used at the very beginning of his journey that were given to him by Shimotsuki Kozaburo. Now, they were used alongside the Waruichi Munji for an unknown amount of time until they were easily broken during Zoro's first duel with Dracul Mihawk. In fact, they were cut right in half by Yoru. After having his swords broken, Zoro went to a shop and bought the Yubashiri sword, a meito that was previously an heirloom of Ippon Matsu's family. Now, the vendor gave it to Zoro after witnessing the swordsman's prowess and not having his arm cut off by the cursed sword, Kitetsu. Unfortunately, during the Eni's lobby arc, the Yubashiri sword was destroyed by an enemy named Shu, who rusted the sword through with the power of his devil fruit and was subsequently laid to rest in the tomb of the Rumbar pirates on Thriller Bark. Another sword that Zoro once wielded was Shusui, one of the 21 great great blades and a powerful black blade to boot. This was a famous sword wielded by the legendary samurai Ryuma and a treasured heirloom throughout Wano country. Now it was stolen along with Ryuma's body by Gekka Moria and used by Ryuma's corpse when it became animated as a zombie. Ryuma himself bestowed it on Zoro after being defeated by the swordsman on Thriller Bark and Zoro used it as a replacement for the Yubashiri sword because as was stated earlier it had been damaged during the fight on Eni's lobby. Now Zoro has also used swords lent to him by Johnny and Yosaku which were lent to him during the fight against Hachan in Arlong Park. While he only owned the Waduichi Munji at the time, he needed to use those swords so he could complete his three sword style, but then return the swords to them after the fight was over. But there you have it friends, these are the swords that Zoro has wielded so far throughout our story of One Piece. And as we can see, he's already managed to use several interesting blades that were able to help him during difficult battles. Because we're heading into the final saga of One Piece, it's likely that we might get to see Zoro replace his swords up to even more powerful swords, especially the Sandai Kitetsu, which is currently the weakest of the three he has. Of his current arsenal, Enma is the sword with the greatest evolutionary potential, and it could become the 13th most powerful sword in the world of One Piece, because if Zoro was able to turn it into a black blade, it could become one of the supreme grade swords in the world. So it means that Zoro is going to likely have to keep this till the end of his journey to have any hope of turning it black and elevating it in rank. Another uncertain thing is whether the Wado Ichimonji could become a black blade, because we know it's very precious to Zoro, and he's been carrying this sword along with a promise that he made to his friend Kuina during his childhood. So we will hardly see Zoro ever getting rid of or upgrading this sword, because since it is still a very mysterious sword with untapped potential, that could be the sword that ends up waking up and maybe even surpasses Enma in power. In other videos on the channel, we've discussed the idea that the Kitetsu blade could actually be replaced by one of the more powerful Kitetsus. After all, there is a supreme grade blade known as the Shodai Kitetsu, which we don't know where it is, and it could even well be in Elbath. 
And fighting this sword could motivate Zoro to replace his old Katetsu with an even more powerful sword, which would then allow him to attain the strongest three blades possible to obtain that ultimate goal of becoming the greatest swordsman in the world. So with all that said, my friends, we'd now love to know what you think about it. First of all, what do you think is gonna be the third blade that Zoro obtains? Could it be the Shodai Katetsu or something that we haven't even imagined yet? There have been discussions around the community that maybe he gets a hold of Ace or some other legendary sword that once belonged to Roger or somebody else famous. What do you think Zoro would add to his arsenal and why? Secondly, how do you think the battle between Zoro and Mihawk will finally happen? Now here on the channel, we've talked about the idea that when Zoro surpasses Mihawk, that it would be an amazing full circle idea to see Zoro cut through Yoru. Because what other way could Zoro show and establish his dominance as the greatest swordsman in the world unless he broke the sword of the former greatest swordsman in the world? Let us know what you think about that and all the other things we've mentioned today in the comments below. So as we wrap up our video today, we'd like to thank you all so much for watching, especially those of you who've made it with us here to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like and hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. I look forward to seeing all of you in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant, wonderful sea together. Take care.